Assignment 32, 4.9, Related Rates. Uh, your essential question is given a situation in which several quantities vary. How do you predict the rate at which one of them is changing when you know other related rates? Okay, so this is all about related rates. Rates of change and how they're related to one another. Let's talk about what a related rate actually is, and then I'll give you some examples. So this is basically any problem where you find the relationship between different variables and the rates at which they're changing. So problems involve finding the relationship between different variables and the rates at which they are changing. So let me give you an example of that, um, maybe an area of a rectangle. Okay, so the area of a rectangle is basically length times width. So we know that if the length is changing with respect to time, so is the area, right? So if length changes with respect to time, so does the area. So we're going to do a few examples here where we're going to translate some words into math models. Okay, so we're going to translate into math models. All right, so the first one we'll do is a bathtub. Is filling. At a rate of two gallons per minute. Okay, well we know that if we let V be the volume of water, then we can say that the rate at which the volume is changing, or dV with respect to time, so the change in the volume with respect to time, will basically be 2 gallons oops, per minute. Okay, let's do one more of those. So a second one might be a balloon is deflating at a rate of three centimeters cubed per second. Notice, right, if we're talking about um, centimeters and we're talking about the volume of air, it's got to be centimeters cubed, okay? And so we can say that if we let volume, or V, be the volume of air in the balloon,
then we would know that the change of that volume with respect to time, dv dt, will end up being, and this time it's deflating, so it's going to be negative 3 centimeters cubed per second. Okay, so I'm going to give you kind of a step-by-step -step process for how to solve related rates problems, and then we're actually going to do a couple. So to solve related rates problems, you'll follow these steps. So step one, and I highly encourage you to do this, draw a diagram so that that way you can label the parts of this diagram and label all the different on um, variables because what I haven't shown you yet is how many variables can be involved in this. Okay. Step two, you're going to write the rates you know. All right. Step three, you're going to write the rates that you want. Okay, step four, and this is probably maybe sometimes the hardest part. You're going to get an equation relating the variables that you appear, that appear in the rates. So you want to get an equation relating the variables. that appear in the rates. Okay, now this is where implicit differentiation comes in because you're going to have a whole bunch of different variables and you'll be taking the derivative with respect to one of them. Okay, so you are going to need to use implicit differentiation in order to fully take the derivative and find all the rates of change. So you're going to use implicit differentiation to differentiate both sides. And solve for the wanted rate. Like in our previous two models, maybe I want to find dv dt. And so I would have dv dt somewhere in my equation after I did implicit differentiation, and then I would solve for it. And the last part is always to answer the question. All right, so let's do some examples. So I gave you guys this handout, 4.9 related rates, and these are our examples that we're going to work on. Okay, so um, I think we can do this all on this sheet of paper. Um, if you find that maybe after the first one you need more paper, then um, we can get more paper, or you can get more paper. All right, so starting with um, the first one, the radius of a sphere is increasing at a constant rate of a half an inch per second. When the radius of the sphere is 15 inches, at what rate is the volume of the sphere changing? And when the volume of the radius of the sphere are changing at the same rate, what is the radius of the sphere? Okay, so we got a couple of questions here that we want to answer um, with, re with um, respect to the radius of a sphere. Okay. All right, so starting with A, I am going to go through my steps, okay? So I am going to start with drawing a diagram. Always start there. Okay, so I've got a sphere.
and the sphere has a radius. Okay. Good. Okay, now the next thing we want to do is we want to write the rates that we know. Well, I was given the fact that the radius of a sphere is increasing at a constant rate. So I know that, okay, so wait, let me label this. So this would be step one. So step two. Step two, I know that the change in the radius with respect to time is equal to half an inch per second. Okay, let's go back to our next step here. So step three, we're going to write the rates that we want. Okay, so let's look at what A is asking. When the radius of the sphere is 15 inches, at what rate is the volume of the sphere changing? So what I want to know then is dv dt. That's going to be my goal. Okay, and I know that I am given the fact that I want to know this rate when the radius of the sphere is actually 15 inches. Okay, that, that information is going to become pretty important. Okay, so next, step four, get an equation relating the variables that appear in the rates. So a lot of time this equation will just be um, a formula, maybe a formula that you remember, maybe a formula you have to look up. Um, other times it might be like you'll have to draw the diagram and, and maybe set up like a, tri maybe it's a right triangle, the picture of this diagram, and you'll have to use like the Pythagorean theorem or something. So maybe not something that's really a formula, but something that you kind of have to apply to a given physical situation. Okay, so for us, we're talking about the volume of a sphere. So the volume of a sphere is volume equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. That was step four. Okay, now step five. We are going to use implicit differentiation to differentiate both sides and solve for the wanted rate. So now I am going to take the derivative of both sides of this with respect to time, right? Because that's what I'm, what I'm missing here. I need to know when the radius is 15 inches, what is the rate? And the rate is per time, right? Rate is like inches per second. Okay, so I'm going to take the derivative of this equation, both sides, with respect to time. I didn't leave myself very much room here. I apologize. So the derivative, I'll just put it over here, with respect to time. Okay, that's what I'm going to do to both sides. All right, so the derivative of the volume with respect to time is going to be dv dt. We've got... Four thirds, that's just a coefficient, and so is pi. So I'm just going to leave four thirds pi in the front. And now I need to take the derivative of the radius with respect to time. Okay, so I'm going to start off by saying, all right, let me use my power rule. This is really 3r squared, but then I have to chain rule it because I'm taking the derivative with respect to time, and this is an r. I'm going to have a dr dt. Okay, so let's see, I just did my implicit differentiation. Oops, that was number five, wasn't it? Okay, and then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually um, answer the question by plugging in the information that I currently have. Okay, so I am looking for the rate of the volume of the sphere changing. So I'm looking for dv dt, so I don't actually have to solve for that. Um, I don't have to get it by itself, it already is, is what I mean. And I need to plug in everything that I know so I can actually get a rate. So let's see, I know that the um, radius is changing by 0.5 inches per second. And I know that the radius is also 15 inches. So these are things I can directly plug in. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do now. So my dv dt will equal 4 thirds pi 
times 3 times whatever the radius is at that time, and that radius is 15 inches. That's going to be squared. And then dr dt, well, I was given that in the beginning, and that's 0 0.5 inches per second. So I'm going to have inches squared and another inch per second. So that's going to end up giving me inches cubed per second. Okay, so you really want to keep in mind your um, rates and your units. Okay, so I know that dv dt will end up being, oh, let's see, these threes reduce. Um, this is going to end up giving me, let's see, how about half of that? So I'm going to have 2 pi times 225, which should end up giving me 450 pi altogether as inches cubed per second. Okay, so definitely keep um, track of your units. That's going to be really, really, really important. Okay, so that's our answer. Okay, now we need to answer B. So when the volume, oops, let me put that back for you, sorry. When the volume and the radius of the sphere are changing at the same rate, what is the radius of the sphere? Okay, so I am going to go back and say that the radius, the, sorry, the rate of the volume and the radius are the same. Okay, so let me go back to my um, formula or my, after I differentiated this function, this formula, let me go back to this. So this is where I'm going to start with, okay? And I will know that this and this are the exact same, okay? All right, so be here. So if I have dv dt equals 4 thirds pi times 3r squared dr dt. Now again, these are the exact same thing, okay? And my goal right now is to find the radius of the sphere when those two things are the same, okay? So really easily I can divide both sides by this and basically just get 1. Okay, so I'm going to end up with, I guess I can divide right here. So this is just going to become 1. So I now have 1 equals 4 thirds pi 3r squared. Okay, and now I can go ahead and let's see, I'll reduce this again. So I'm just going to take both sides and divide by 4 pi. So I now have 1 over 4 pi equals r squared. Okay, and then I'm going to want to get r all by itself because I'm solving for the radius. So I'm going to have to square root both sides. So I'll have, let's see, 1 over the square root of 4 is 2, and I'm going to end up with a root pi then under there, and that'll equal my r. I'm not concerned with positives and negatives here because radius can only be positive. So the last thing I need to do is get that radical out of the denominator. So I'm going to rationalize it by multiplying both sides, or top and bottom, by the square root of pi. So when I do that, let's see, let's just draw this over here. So r is going to equal the square root of pi over 2 pi, and that will be my radius. Okay, let's do number 2. Let's see, where's my ruler? Nice break in between them. Okay, I did pretty good. I was able to fit it all there. So if you weren't able to fit it all um, the way that I have it, then you can go ahead and use another sheet of paper so you don't run out of room.
Okay, let's do another one. So the edges of a cube are increasing at a rate of two centimeters per second. All right, so let's see for A. How fast is the volume of the cube increasing when each edge is five centimeters long? Okay, so again, I'm going to go through my steps using these right here. Okay, so first step, step one, and I'll label them, and it might be helpful so that that way you know, hey, I've got six steps each time, or maybe you just get really used to this process, and then you don't have to even worry about it. Okay, but first step is draw a diagram. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw, to the best of my ability, a cube. You might be able to draw it better than I can. Okay, and let's see. Let's just say that a cube, if we know anything about a cube, we know that it's made up of six squares, right? So we'll just label the side as side. Okay, I am given the fact that the edges of a cube are increasing at a rate of two centimeters per second. So maybe I'll say that if I want to put right the rates that I know, which is step two, I'll just say that the change of s with respect to time is basically two centimeters per second. Okay, and so what am I looking for? Well, I'm looking for how fast is the volume of the cube increasing when each edge is five centimeters long. So step three, what do I want to find? I want to know the change in the volume with respect to time. That's what I don't know. And I want to do that when I know that the length of an edge is 5 uh, centimeters. All right, that was step 3. So step 4 is to get an equation relating the variables that appear in the rates. So if I'm talking about volume of a cube, well, the volume of a cube is basically base times width times height, right? So it's all of these things, length times width times height. So I'm going to have in a cube, it's just going to be whatever your side is cubed. Okay, and I'll make step five kind of a separate one this time. I did it really messy last time. So now step five is to use implicit differentiation to differentiate both sides. So I'm going to say that I'm going to take the derivative with respect to time of volume and I'm also going to take the derivative with respect to time of s cubed. Okay. Now, again, I'm taking the, because this is a rate, I'm taking the derivative with respect to time. Because in your denominator, you always have it per seconds, per minutes, per something. Okay. So notice that, you know, I don't have any variables here that coincide with t. So I'm going to have to chain rule these guys. Okay. So when I take the derivative with respect to time of volume, and this is step six, this is where I'm basically going to, no, that's not true. We won't make it step six yet. I'll answer the question after I do finish my implicit differentiation. How about that? So I'm going to have dv dt. And so again, you can think of this, I'm probably giving you like just too much information, but just to really make this clear, there is a power here. Right? And so, and if I bring that power down, I'm going to be left with v to the zero. Okay? So v to the zero is just one. But then I have to do the chain rule, so then I have to take the derivative of v with respect to t. So that's where that dv dt is coming from. Okay? Now on this side, I'm going to start with the power rule, and that actually does apply. This becomes 3s squared. Then I'm going to multiply that by, the, I now I need to do the chain rule. Okay, so now I need to think about s. Well, that's the derivative of s with respect to time. Okay, and now it's time for me to answer the question. So plug in the things that I know and get the thing that I want. Well, again, the thing that I'm, I'm looking for is how fast is the volume increasing. So I'm still looking for dv dt, so it's already by itself. You know, but if they had asked you some, you know, to figure out I don't know how fast the length of the edge is changing, then you'd need to get this by itself and figure that out. Okay, but this example, again, we just want the, the change in the volume. 
Okay, so I know that the side length is 5 centimeters, right? So right there I've got a centimeter squared times the rate at which it's changing, which is this 2 centimeters per second. So times 2. Now again, that's centimeters per second. So I've got a centimeter squared times the centimeters. Okay, so that's going to be centimeters cubed over seconds. Okay, and I'm keeping that in my mind, but if you want to write it out, if you feel like that is more beneficial for you, then please do that. Okay, we really want to be careful with your units. All right, so the change in the volume with respect to time is going to be, let's see, 75 times 2. So I'm going to have 150 centimeters cubed per second. So that was the answer to A. Now let's see what B wants. So for B, how fast is the surface area of the cube changing when each edge is 5 centimeters? Okay, so everything's still the same. All my information is still the same. Okay, but now what I want to know, oh, except for this formula. This formula would not be for surface area. So let's think about surface area on this. I am looking for basically the area of each face of these. And how many faces is there in a cube? Well, there's six, right? So the surface area is going to be six areas, right? Six areas of squares, okay? All right, and so for this time, I guess I don't want, I don't want to know how fast the volume is changing. I want to know how fast the surface area is changing. So all my other stuff is still true, right? I still have the fact that the side is changing by 2 centimeters per second. Okay, my side is still 5. But instead of saying, oh, I want to know what the, vol what the change in the volume is, is with respect to time, I'm going to say I want to know what the change in the surface area is with respect to time. So I'll say, I'll just leave it like that. Derivative of surface area with respect to time, that's our question mark. Okay, so really now what I'm doing is I've got that equation. Now I'm skipping down to step five, and I'm going to go ahead and use implicit differentiation to differentiate both sides here. Okay, so I'm going to do the derivative with respect to time, both sides. So the change in the surface area with respect to time. Okay, now here's where it gets tricky, right? So you have that coefficient, leave that. You've got this S squared, so I'm going to start with the power rule. And then I need to um, chain rule this, right? So this is going to be the derivative or the change in the side with respect to time. Okay, so simplifying this, the derivative of surface area with respect to time will be 12s ds dt. Now I know s, and I know the change in s, right? So the change in my surface area with respect to time will be 12 times the length of a side, which is 5 centimeters, okay? times the change in the side with respect to time, which it was increasing at 2 centimeters per second. Okay, so let's think about this. So now I've got centimeters times centimeters per second. So that's going to be centimeters squared per second. So my change in surface area with respect to time will be, let's see, that's 60 times 2, so that's going to be 120 centimeters squared per second. Yikes. Let's try that one more time. There you go. And that's related rates.